Welcome back everybody. If you recall in one of my previous thrift store hauls, I found a set of three cauldrons. They were $1.21 each from the Goodwill store. They're brand new. They had tags still on them. Um, I thought I would make this into a fireplace decoration um, by building a stand for them. I got my inspiration for this project off Pinterest. Um, in fact, I saw it also at my last Pottery Barn walkthrough, a picture of three cauldrons on a stand, just hanging off of a stand, and I thought I could easily make that myself, DIYing it very easily. I'm gonna show you um, how I'm gonna do that. We're gonna do it together. So let me just move these cauldrons aside, because um, we'll get to those a little bit later. First thing we're gonna need to do is buy some PVC. Now I have decided um, what I'm going to do is build a base. Um, and then I'm going to have a bar across the top. Now I measured the three cauldrons. I needed about a three foot bar. Luckily, I happened to, I, I use PVC in a lot of projects. I happen to have this bar pre-cut to this length, so that was just perfect. Um, I also need something to make it, you know, however high I need it. I'm just going to cut this PVC bar in half and we will just use that height. I like to just use what I have on hand, it keeps it simple. I did have to buy from Home Depot a bunch of these 45 degree angles because I wanted to make the base um, have this, this shape here. So it's gonna stand like so. Um, and then you'll just need some extra connector PVC pieces. Um, again, these I had on hand from another project that I was using. They were a little bit long because what happens is if you um, have them too long, you're gonna see a little bit of that connector PVC. So you wanna cut it down to size so that it is roughly, I don't know, like half an inch or so, so that when you connect them, you can see there's just a little bit hanging out there. They will go together and form one continuous line without that connector piece visible. So, all right, I used 12 of these. Well, I haven't used them yet. <laughs> We're gonna do it together. Um, so 12 of these angles, you don't have to use angles. Um, I mean, you could just do a, a 90 degree um, connector piece, save yourself a little bit of work, but I thought this was just a little bit more attractive. That's why I was just taking the extra step. And you know, if you're worried about how you're gonna cut these, I purchased this tool from Home Depot. I think it was about, I've been using it for years. I don't remember how much I paid for it. It was under $20, um, but it's very simple to cut PVC. Let me show you how we cut it with this piece since I need to cut it in half anyway. Okay, I went ahead and measured the length of this pipe. It was 21 inches, so I, um, just drew a little mark here at the 10 and a half inch mark halfway point and we are just going to cut it in half you open up your little tool I don't even know what they call this but you know it's for cutting PVC pipe you're just gonna line it up and just start squeezing it and eventually that blade is just going to start cutting right through it couldn't be easier so I've cut so many pieces with this thing and I've never sharpened it. I've used it for years. Um, I'm sure it would do it a lot better if I did sharpen it, but you know, I'm not going to. All right, so that's how tall my stand is going to be. I'm gonna need to add some more 45 degree angles here to get to the top. So we're just push those together, there we go. And then I'm going to have my bar here, and there we go. I'm just gonna have to build the other side to hold it in place. So, just to run through this again, we're going to take our 45 degree pieces, and one thing I do um, to keep my size correct is if I push one of these little spacer pieces in there, I can just line it up with the cutter blade and just cut it careful because it'll shoot a, shoot that little piece off. Um, but then that gives me just the perfect amount um, that I need on the other side. So there we go. All right, I already have one here. So I need my T to make the top piece. I need one more 
little connector. I think this one might be too small. Let's see. No, nope, that's fine. So there we go. There's my second one. You can see how fast and easy this goes together. Let's put this side here. Now it should just stand. Oh, whoops. I forgot my, oh, I forgot my top piece. Okay. We're not quite finished yet. <laughs> so we have to make my other 45 degree angles here. I'm one short on my spacer. I'm just going to put that in, pry this up, cut off this little bit here. Okay. Now my other spacer, our 45 degree, there we go. Put on my bar. I'm going to have to move my candle lump down here. Put on my other side should just all stick together. Now, we could at this point um, use some PVC glue and that would make this stick together very well, but I see no reason to do that. I like things that come apart. I can just stick this, um, pull it apart, stick it in a bag, have it ready for next year. Um, but we're not quite finished. <laughs> I just wanted to um, give you some pointers there. Let me get this stuff out of the way. Um, so I'm gonna spray paint this bar I'm going to use some matte finish black spray paint um, and hopefully that will make it look good. Now we can, I wanted this to hang, this might be a little too tall. So I might, I'm going to test fit it in my um, living room on my mantle just to see if this is a good height. But what I'm going to do to hang them, originally I think you could use S hooks. So that might be um, the easiest way, but I don't have any S hooks. So I am just going to use some um, zip ties. I'll zip tie it together and have three hanging cauldrons here. However, um, you know, that's good too, the hang, the hanging zip ties, because then I can adjust how high I want it hanging or not. So I'm not going to do that just now until after I get this painted. The other thing you could do, I'm assuming I'm not going to try it because I like the black look. Um, you could paint this perhaps, you know, we took that inspiration from that Pottery Barn picture. Um, you might be able to spray paint this with some of that copper spray paint. I don't know how well it's going to take on plastic, but you know, if you wanted to really emulate that look, that could be a real good look. So let me get this bar painted and then we will come back. We'll hang the pots and find a way to fill them. All right, so I have put two coats of paint on my rack. It seems to be stable, fine, looks great. Only thing left to do is hang up our cauldrons. Now, I do want to fill the cauldrons. Um, there are plenty of things we can use to fill them. You know, if you wanna be creepy, you could put in some like plastic skulls from the Dollar Tree or spiders or, you know, the little snakes or something. I, however, am going to go the simple route and fill them with candy. And actually, these are going to be great for when I start making my little candy bags for Halloween. Um, they're going to hold a lot of the bags because I never have a place to store them. I, I usually make them quite a, a ways in advance so that I have somewhere to, you know, or I don't have to worry about them for Halloween, but I never have anywhere to put them. So this does double duty now. I have somewhere to put them. But in the meantime, all I bought was just one little bag of candy and it's not going to fill up all three. So I've just gone ahead and taken three um, sheets of this wrapping um, paper that came from TJ Maxx with all the things I've been buying for Halloween lately um, to partially fill up the cauldron. So each one I figure takes about three. And there we go. Now when I go ahead and fill up the candy, I only have to fill up the top section. There we go. So there's one, two, and three. This is a, a nice way to make it look like your candy bowls are really full and not spend a fortune on candy. So here we go. I have my three full candy cauldrons and I still have half a bag of candy. All right, now we need to hang these still. Now, 
really, I would prefer to use an S hook. That way I can just pull them on and off really quick. Um, but in the meantime, I'm just going to use these zip ties. So we will go ahead and zip tie them. I'm going to try and get them all roughly equal. Um, you want them to be, I don't know, whatever height works for you. I kind of like that. So let's do that height. We've got one, two. I did not really anticipate this candy being so heavy. <laughs> Whoops. Made that one a little higher. Okay, two. But, you know, this PVC is pretty sturdy. The problem with using these zip ties is I'm not going to be able to take these. Well, I can still take them off. You just pull apart the PVC and then you can slide them off. Um, but let's go ahead and clip these. There we go. I've got my three hanging cauldrons. Very reminiscent of the Pottery Barn one that I really liked. And, you know, I said in my other video, sorry, the beginning of this video, which was a day or so ago, um, for me anyway, that I was not going to spray paint them, but that that was certainly an option for you. But I did go ahead and I went to Walmart and I got some um, hammered, coppery colored spray paint and I think it actually looks pretty good so I need your opinion let me know do you think I should go ahead and spray paint them all this this is a hammered it's supposed to be a hammered and you can just barely see any sort of texture I never think that these things turn out very well but um, so it doesn't really look hammered to me perhaps a bit on the inside I know it's probably hard for you to see that but um, what do you think about the outside does it look like it is better than my black cauldrons. The black cauldrons are just very typical cauldron to me. This dresses it up a little bit. Tell me, what do you think? Should I paint them or should I leave them black? I look forward to hearing your comments. And that's it for this simple, easy DIY. Again, it only costs a few bucks in PVC. Um, you can save even more money. I used, you know, these um, 45 degree angle pieces, which are a little bit more expensive than the 90 degree ones. Um, I mean, you can make this a few bucks cheaper, but it's not an expensive prop to make anyway. So I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. Let me know your thoughts. That's it for today. So stay tuned for more DIYs, product reviews, and store walkthroughs. And until next time, guys, take care and happy haunting.